High Altitude Platform Station, Wikipedia Audio High Altitude Platform Station is according to Article 1.66A of the International Telecommunication Union SITU radio regulations defined as a station on an object at an altitude of 20 to 50 km and at a specified, nominal, fixed point relative to the Earth. Each station shall be classified by the service in which it operates permanently or temporarily. A HAP can be a manned or unmanned airplane, a balloon, or an airship. All require electrical power to keep themselves and their payload functional. While current HAPs are powered by batteries or engines, mission time is limited by the need for recharging slash refueling. Therefore, alternative means are being considered for the future. Solar cells are one of the best options currently being used under trial for HAPs. Design Considerations Whether an airship or an aeroplane, a major challenge is the ability of the HAP to maintain station keeping in the face of winds. An operating altitude between 17 and 22 km is chosen because in most regions of the world this represents a layer of relatively mild wind and turbulence above the jet stream. Although the wind profile may vary considerably with latitude and with season, a form similar to that shown will usually obtain. This altitude is also above commercial air traffic heights which would otherwise prove a potentially prohibitive constraint. Since HAPs operate at much lower altitudes than satellites, it is possible to cover a small region much more effectively. Lower altitude also means much lower telecommunications link budget and smaller round-trip delay compared to satellites. Furthermore, Deploying a satellite requires significant time and monetary resources, in terms of development and launch. HAPs, on the other hand, are comparatively less expensive and are rapidly deployable. Another major difference is that a satellite, once launched, cannot be landed for maintenance, while HAPs can. Aerovironment will design and development solar-powered UAV prototypes for $65 million for HAPS Mobile, a joint venture 95% funded and owned by Japanese Telco SoftBank, its 247 feet span Helios prototype first flew in 1999 and reached 96,863 feet in 2001 before breaking up in flight in 2003. In 2002, its 121 feet span Pathfinder Plus carried a communications payload to FL650. Its hydrogen-powered global observer designed to stay aloft a week in the stratosphere first flew in 2010 but crashed in 2011. Airbus builds the Zephyr, spanning 82 feet and weighing less than 145 pounds. It is designed to stay aloft for months and an earlier version flew for 14 days in 2010. Facebook develops the Aquila solar-powered high-altitude flying wing UAV to provide internet connectivity, spanning 132 feet and weighing 935 pounds. It made two low-altitude test flights in 2016 and 2017 and is designed to stay aloft at FL650 for 90 days. Thales Alenia Space develops the Stratobus unmanned solar-powered stratospheric airship. 377 feet long and weighting 15,000 pounds including a 550 pounds payload, it is designed for a five-year mission with annual servicing and a prototype is planned for late 2020. China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation flew a 147 feet span solar powered UAV to FL650 in a 15 hours test flight in July 2017. Russia's Lavochkin Design Bureau is flight testing the LA 252, an 82 feet span, 
255 pounds solar powered UAV designed to stay aloft 100 days in the stratosphere. One of the latest uses of HAPS has been for radio communication service. Research on HAPS is being actively carried largely in Europe, where scientists are considering them as a platform to deliver high speed connectivity to users over areas of up to 400 kilometers. It has gained significant interest because HAPS will be able to deliver bandwidth and capacity similar to a broadband wireless access network while providing a coverage area similar to that of a satellite. High-altitude airships can improve the military's ability to communicate in remote areas such as those in Afghanistan, where mountainous terrain frequently interferes with communications signals. One of the best examples of a high-altitude platform used for surveillance and security is Northrop Grumman RQ-4 Global Hawk UAV used by the U.S. Air Force. It has a service ceiling of 20 kilometers and can stay in the air for continuous 36 hours. It carries a highly sophisticated sensor system including radar, optical, and infrared imagers. It is powered by a turbofan engine and is able to deliver digital sensor data in real time to a ground station. Another future use that is currently being investigated is monitoring of a particular area or region for activities such as flood detection, seismic monitoring, remote sensing and disaster management. Perhaps the most common use of high-altitude platforms is for environment-slash-weather monitoring. Numerous experiments are conducted through high-altitude balloons mounted with scientific equipment, which is used to measure environmental changes or to keep track of weather. Recently, NASA in partnership with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, has started using Global Hawk UAV to study Earth's atmosphere. Due to the height, more than 90% of atmospheric matter is below the high-altitude platform. This reduces atmospheric drag for starting rockets. As a rough estimate, a rocket that reaches an altitude of 20 km when launched from the ground will reach 100 km if launched at an altitude of 20 km from a balloon. Such a platform has been proposed to allow the usage of mass drivers for launching goods or humans into orbit. The United States Department of Defense Missile Defense Agency contracted Lockheed Martin to construct a high-altitude airship to enhance its ballistic missile defense system. Limitation due to power An unmanned lighter-than-air vehicle, the HA was proposed to operate at a height of above 60,000 feet in a quasi-geostationary position to deliver persistent orbital station keeping as a surveillance aircraft platform, telecommunications relay, or a weather observer. They originally proposed to launch their HA in 2008. The airship would be in the air for up to one month at a time and was intended to survey a 600-mile diameter of land. It was to use solar cells to provide its power and would be unmanned during its flight. The production concept would be 500 feet long and 150 feet in diameter. To minimize weight, it was to be composed of high-strength fabrics and use lightweight propulsion technologies. A subscale demonstrator unit for this project, the High Altitude Long Endurance Demonstrator, was built by Lockheed Martin and launched on a test flight on July 27, 2011 to demonstrate key technologies critical to the development of unmanned airships. The airship was supposed to reach an altitude of 60,000 feet, but a problem with the helium levels occurred at 32,000 feet which prevented it from reaching its target altitude, and the flight was terminated. It descended and landed at a speed of about 20 feet per second in a heavily forested area in Pennsylvania. Two days after the landing, before the vehicle was recovered from the crash site, the vehicle was destroyed by fire. 
A stratospheric airship is a powered airship designed to fly at very high altitudes 30,000 to 70,000 feet. Most designs are remote-operated aircraft slash unmanned aerial vehicles. To date none of these designs have received approval from the FAA to fly in U.S. airspace. Stratospheric airship efforts are being developed in at least five countries. The first stratospheric-powered airship flight took place in 1969, reaching 70,000 feet for two hours with a 5 pounds payload. On December 4, 2005 a team led by Southwest Research Institute, sponsored by the Army Space and Missile Defense Command, successfully demonstrated powered flight of the High Sentinel stratospheric airship at an altitude of 74,000 feet. Japan and South Korea are also planning to deploy Haas. South Korea has been conducting flight tests for several years with a vehicle from Worldwide Aeros. In January 2018, several systems were in development. Altitude Selection for HAPS Comparison to Satellites Applications Telecommunications Surveillance and Intelligence Real-time monitoring of a region Weather and Environmental Monitoring As a Rocket Launch Platform Lockheed Martin High Altitude Airship Stratospheric airship Aircraft